In today's world, it is next to impossible to run a business or gain attention to a project without the use of social media. However, social media has its own pitfalls in our personal lives, let alone when one is trying to run a business whilst keeping media engagement. That is where Katie Cryer and Savannah Loy come in. Cryer & Co. is a different kind of marketing company, employing a different philosophy into the social media landscape, the most radical of which is the insistence on no ads. I had a lot of fun sitting down with Katie and Savannah and discussing their journey, as well exploring their philosophy and what really sets Cryer and Co. apart. So please join me as we go and meet Katie and Savannah. Well, now that I've started an argument here in the podcast studio, uh, <laughs> uh, she, Savannah's turned her back. Uh, oh. She's not talking to <laughs> Stay on your side. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, today I'm at uh, Cryer and Co., and I'm sitting down with Katie Cryer and Savannah Loy. They're the uh, brains and everything else behind Cryer and like Co. That. So I think uh, the best way to start this would to be to explain what Cryer and Co. is. Yeah, so we're Cryer and Co. Media. We're primarily a social media marketing agency. And so much more, we have a team of seven girls so we can do it all we do drone we have a photographer um we websites websites we also have a content studio we have a content studio you can rent out by the hour and we love we love what we do and we've been doing it for a minute now we've kind of tagged ourselves as the heart of social because we go beyond just a, a cute picture and a funny video we really get to the heart of each business that we represent all right. So, uh, how'd y'all meet? How'd this all uh, kick off? Okay. And I, I love this story. So should, should I do the meet cute? You can do the meet cute. Yeah. I'm, I'm an author. Okay. And She's as, a better storyteller. As of two years ago, I wasn't even on Facebook. So, social media was not in my vernacular at all. Despised it. And when I became an author, my publisher said, well, you need to have a social media presence. And I was like, ew, why? I don't want to do that. <laughs> and she's like, well, do you want to be a successful author or do you just want to have books? Successful author. She's like, then social media. So, I got on All Things Tyler. Love the site. And I said, I need a social media person. Who's the best? And Katie's name came up. And since I knew nothing, I was like, okay, I'll message her. She uh, took a long time to respond to me. <laughs> but we met at a coffee shop. And I said, I need to hire you. And then I need to fire you because I have six kids and I can't afford you. So teach me your ways. She is still in my phone today as Katie Cryer marketing wizard because I knew nothing. And she was going to teach me her ways. So that's how we met. Yeah. And um, probably two months into working together, I I knew she had six kids. And um, I'm not a gatekeeper. I was teaching her what mm -hmm. I could. And I'd gone to her. I was still working my nine to five corporate job. And slowly business started taking off, right? I got more and more clients. I wasn't stable enough to quit my nine to five yet, but I was on the hunt to hire an assistant. I reached out to her and my other clients, letting them know, okay, it might not be me who's coming out and filming you next time, just a heads up. And Savannah said, hear me out. I will intern for you. I know I'm not up to par on everything, but I have a lot to offer. And thank goodness we did that. <laughs> Uh, her value is, what is the word? Un immeasurable, invaluable. immeasurable, <laughs> invaluable. Well, I, um, honestly was just going to do part time. I wanted to come home Oops. more so I could stay with my kids more. I do have six of them and we were still fostering some of them. Um, we've adopted five of them from CPS, but anyways, I was just looking for something small part time supplement, some of my income where I was working so I could come home half the day. And <laughs> within four months of doing that, somehow this thing took off. And next thing I know, we're CEO, CEO, we're business partners and we're running a very successful yeah. company and that's not the plan that I had, but I very quickly, so much of what I brought to the table was um, the creative side. Savannah brings the business side. I knew nothing about taxes. I knew nothing about structuring a business. And so that's why we work really well together. We balance each other out. And 
like she said, it we never could have imagined this. I was just thinking freelance assistant and it the sky was the limit pretty quickly. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. Katie's strengths are creativity and people. My strengths are organization <laughs> and structure. And so we are literally the exact opposite. Not that I hate people. I love people, but I'm not. I'm an introvert. Mm-hmm. She is not. She is a social butterfly. So she's great at the networking, bringing people in, um, socializing with them. I'm great at making sure that their business is taken care of and being handled the way that it should. <laughs> I didn't even know you had to like put money away. My Don't dad's my dad's going to kill me like... <laughs> Savannah has us well, all well, structured See, now. It's cash only. <laughs> it's untraceable. Yeah, we, yeah. Trust me. When I finally got into the back end some things, I'm like, let's talk. Let's have like, a conversation. Thank God for Savannah. <laughs> no, we we literally are the perfect balance for this to be successful. It, it wouldn't function with one or the other. Without, yeah. without mm-hmm. the other, it truly wouldn't. And, and I think that is the thing with like creatives is it's really hard for creatives <laughs> to run a business. Yeah. I, I mean. I, I know me with like all the stuff I do. I like have so many projects and I'm, so like, many helping, ideas, helping different people and stuff. I'm like, well, I need to edit this for this person, but mm-hmm. right now I really want to do this. Yeah, <laughs> like, and just staying organized very quickly. She created a system for us, and that's what allowed us to expand really quickly, especially our yeah. team. And I'm super creative, but my creativity is. I enjoy expressing it through words. I don't enjoy expressing it through design. I can design. Mm. I do design. I design for our companies, but it's just not, I don't love doing it. It's my passion is not there versus Katie. That's her I passion. I love video. She loves all of being all up in it. And I, I don't, I like to express my creativity through books. So um, writing a caption for a company, 10 out of 10. Yes. <laughs> I can write a caption for <laughs> you. A newsletter, mm-hmm. something literature, I got you. But um, so I definitely wouldn't, I would not do it, be able to handle a social media company by myself because I don't like doing it. Yeah. yeah. So, so we, we've talked about your background. You were an author or are an yeah. author. I don't think you cease to be. No. Um, <laughs> so what, what's your background? Yeah, I came to Tyler to work at the TV station as a reporter. I never wanted to be a reporter. I just knew, as I'm sure you know, out of college, you have um, these uh, reels or this portfolio. Mm-hmm. And I knew if I didn't take that... And at least try the news, I would never do it. They want young, fresh people out of college. Um, so they can pay you more. <laughs> <Or less>. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I went there, and that really pushed me out of my comfort zone. Man, you have to knock on people's doors. Your deadlines are tight. It is yeah. a hard, hard business. But it made me fall in love with Tyler. Tyler was the big city growing up. I'm from Nacogdoches, so, like, the Dillard's here was a big deal. (laughs) The shoe department was heaven. But anyway, I met my husband at the news station, and pretty quickly I was working some rough hours, so I knew, okay, if we're going to get married, have kids, this is not the lifestyle. I saw the, um, the seasoned anchors, you know, they wouldn't be able to tuck their kids in because they're on the 10 o'clock news, and, Mm -hmm. um, it's it's a wonderful profession, and we need the news, but it was not for me. But my love of storytelling and Tyler was born there. So I went corporate. I worked for the Greater Tyler Association of Realtors, and the structure... I, I do the windows there. Oh, and my gosh. He, he looks familiar. So yeah. I, I, I have seen he, was, he saw you <laughs> Wait, in his I love windows. that. I love it. <laughs> Miss I'm Mary. I'm just spying on everybody. Yeah, I okay, love it. Yeah, they have, they have a lot of windows. <laughs> Ooh, that's so funny that would be a good main I did it char- yesterday that would be actually. a good main character for one of my serial killers <gasps> a window washer ooh Savannah <laughs> that's kind of creepy hey, listen, I've got a business to sorry here. <laughs> in my book in my book <laughs> oh my gosh that would be so good though. oh that would be good but <laughs> I did that for a while and the funny thing is like when you're washing windows it's like I don't know yeah, you're you not. Behind it. I'll, I'll be like talking to myself, singing. I'm like, oh, there's people behind me. Watching you. <laughs> <laughs> you don't notice them, but they noticed you, Isaac. <laughs> that is, yeah, that is true. Moving I feel like a fishbowl. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Anyway, I, I took you off. No, you're good. So being attached to a desk. Being attached to a desk, I never loved. My mother would tell you from a very 
young age, I was very stubborn. I didn't like being told what to do. In the back of my head, I always liked the idea of being my own boss. But people from the association realtors started reaching out and saying, hey, you're really good at what you're doing for the association's socials. Like, hey, can you help me with my socials? 50 bucks lunch. Like, I didn't know what to charge. So I started freelancing and yeah, that took off to where I needed an assistant to where I called Savannah one day and said, I quit my job. We're doing this. And it was fun. We never looked back and scaling looking back is crazy, a blessing and word of mouth is what's done it. That's what I'm so proud of is we've built this business through relationships. So I moved to Tyler five years ago and I, I jumped in. So the networking and Tyler's a people city. They love to connect you with other people. It's just putting yourself out there. Which is why I couldn't do this by myself. (laughs) (laughs) It would be unsuccessful. I think Tyler's kind of going through a renaissance right now. Yeah. When when I'd I'd come here as a kid to visit my grandparents, so we'd drive through Tyler. No, I've got absolutely, I had way too much audio that I had absolutely not. But uh, <laughs> when I drive through Tyler to come visit my grandparents, you know, like 10 years ago, and there was like nothing here. Yeah. Especially downtown, like this whole area. I oh, love yeah. downtown. Love it. Yeah. But yeah, no, I mean, through this, I've gotten to meet like a lot of people. Y'all probably also know who, you know are building up businesses and communities and stuff. And it's, it's been really cool to see. Yeah, our um, Tyler was big city for me when I was a kid too because we were very poor. So our family vacations, we lived in Longview. Our family vacation was driving to Tyler to go to the zoo. I knew it was did the not, zoo. Did I not know I w- when I was a child that Tyler was only 45 minutes away. I'm pretty sure my parents like – like drove it a couple of times <laughs> to make us feel like we were going far. And I also did not know the zoo was free. So when I'm... The zoo was free? It was yes, free for the, long, for the like, longest. Until probably like eight years ago. Yes. You wow. Could go for free. For free. E- even like not till long ago, you could take in kids for free. Yeah. So it wasn't... Wow. So as a kid though, we, there was five of us. And so I just thought it was this big trip. That, and then when I moved to Thailand, I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> that's a 38 minute trip for a free zoo wait a second I mean they did their best we have but clients in Longview we go to Longview yeah my background is actually not author I've only been an author for not even two years yet isn't that crazy it is crazy so, so what is your background then <sighs> well what, how much time do you have well no I was a nine one. I do love a good zoo I wanted to get married in a zoo but it was like five thousand dollars the Dallas Zoo and I was like no thanks um Fort Worth Zoo is better anyway, um you know. I love all the zoos um I got to tell you about this really cool thing I want to do. But anyways, <laughs> I was a 9-1 dispatcher and hostage negotiator. That's oh. that's what I did. And then I only left that to start and run and be the principal of a Christian school. <laughs> that was what I was doing before this. So so the, that where because like just the couple of books you talked about, it's very crime oriented. <laughs> I only have one crime book out. It's oh, going to be a okay. series though. I have a dystopian, I have a children's book, and now I have a fairy tale retelling. I write across all genres. Nice. What what kind of dystopian? Um, it's actually real life dystopian because I've never read a dystopian before. Um, in fact, I didn't know that word when I was explaining the book to my mom. It was a dream I had. She's like, "Oh my gosh, that's a dystopian." I'm like, "Oh my gosh, what's that?" Because I read thrillers. That's the kind of book that I read. So, yeah. um, it was a foreign foreign idea to me that there was that was such a thing. I didn't even know it was a genre. So, it's one of my favorite genres. Really, the movies at least. Oh well. Yeah. Reset available on Amazon. Reset. Get it now. <laughs> <laughs> so and I, I guess uh now that we've kind of like established who y'all are what y'all do uh you know talking people out of uh taking hostages and, yeah. and such uh <laughs> uh what sets y'all's company apart from like other social media Ooh, i love this it's question too it's the heart oh We're sorry i heart. left you hanging <laughs> We really sit down and evaluate your company. We come in and we get to know you as people because that's what East Texas is. Mm -hmm. People want to do business with good people. And showcasing that through video, through being personable online, that's what really sets us apart. You're not going to get any stock, any cookie cutter. Everything is custom and done with so much love. (laughs) 
Yeah, I would say the heart because, and truly we don't do a one size fits all. Um, yeah. I know we tell people that and it's not that we don't want to give you a price, but we really, we look at your, we want to know your budget and we want to know your three goals. And what we do is we sit down and we brainstorm and go, okay, this is what the client needs. This is what they have to spend. Where can we give them the most for their money? Um, so we don't just have cookie cutter packages because y- your company may not need drone, but this company may need drone to be successful. So we allocate your dollars for what actually benefits you. And so I think that sets us apart too, um, because it is so catered and so specific to that business. Cause we truly do. If we sit down with the business and take them on, cause there's been businesses we haven't taken on. Mm-hmm. We really champion that business and we make it as if we are their employee. Like we, our heart is behind you. And so we have to really feel the passion from the person and the company to get behind it. So we give you everything we got. And, and that is such a privilege to say that now that wasn't always the case in the beginning but we really partner with businesses that we believe in and we are their biggest cheerleaders like need something done at my house i'm gonna call triple e builders yeah uh need electrician patriot electric yeah we rep who we rep is who we use in our own homes but like even we have a new client who opened a pet boutique we were helping her stock dog food when it came in we were putting it on the shelves for her me my kids it's, it's Katie. marketing and more it's more yeah. you get way more than us you get that personal that family touch i think that family touch yeah yeah no that's great so uh you you talked about like not knowing how to charge and oh yeah <laughs> and, and so th- that's like pretty much a problem everybody especially like artists and stuff i've interviewed yeah uh, it, it's a hard thing to figure out what to charge so did y'all come up with a system for that how how long did it take to find that yeah so at the beginning we've definitely leveraged our prices since we've gained experience and equipment and vice versa but i i'm the creative i i just want to produce the video, produce the graphic. So Mm -hmm. that's why Savannah, she's not only our COO, she's our CFO. So she came in and she did a system. So now um, everything is kind of broken down. I'll let her explain that. But that's a really good question because... How do you determine what to charge doing what you're doing? Because it's tough, especially when you're starting out. Mm -hmm. And when we did start out, I went with what Katie had because this is this this world was foreign to me. I mean, truly foreign. And East Texas is not a Dallas. metroplex, yeah. Yeah. so you have to take that into account too. Also, when you started two years ago, there weren't a lot of companies, marketing companies that specialize in social media. social media. It was websites plus some social media attached to it. Typically, yeah. is what it was. So, I, I genuinely had no idea. So we went with her prices, and for a while, I was like. I don't know if this feels right. And then, um, like I said, we, we we partner with our businesses. So we had a business owner sit down with us. And it was at <laughs> his six-month mark. And we were just evaluating where we were, how things were going. And he's like, let's have a heart-to-heart. I don't think you guys are valuing yourselves the way that you should. I don't think that your price margin is where it should be. And we're real big on learning and growing. So we listened to everything he had to say. I did a kind of a deep dive on fair market value for East Texas. We always want to come under what fair market value is because we really want to be able to help everybody. Accessibility is big for us. And this is a luxury. Having this company is a luxury. So then we started looking at, okay, but now we're taking girls on. So we have to make sure bills are paid, things like that. Adding Mm -hmm. a studio, adding an office, all of that changes. So we, we always keep trends with fair market value. We stay underneath it so that way we can be competitive and affordable for people, more affordable than others. And, but really it was his, I think what I took from that meeting with him was more, self-worth don't, yeah don't yeah. don't undervalue yourselves you guys are yeah. you guys do more than the the average company you're out here extra hours like p- price yourself for what you're worth yeah. and i think that was pretty big for us that took us a while to get to that self-worth part you know i think it was like i think that was 10 months into our relationship because that was his six month anniversary but for us i don't think we got there for ourselves because i think we felt kind of ick like are we is this are right? we good is this, enough is this like, okay to be charging this that's so. always in the back of your head yeah i, I mean that's that's a big thing is the self-doubt with stuff because like you can always look on uh social media and see somebody who's doing something yeah. better than you are oh yeah and, and there's always going to be that but like it can get to a point where you're like 
well, I'm not doing something this good, so I'm just going to charge, yeah. you know, $10 I, an hour or something. I can't say <laughs> I can't say now we're very I just doing this for 2 years. We're confident and comfortable now, but it yeah. took us 2 years to get there. But I mean, still as business owners at the end of the day, I think the takeaway is business owners don't make a lot, right? They're the last ones to get paid. They're the the ones that work for less, but we've tried to set it up for our girls to be taken care of and for it to be fair. Like that's what we want to do. We're not trying to get rich. We're just trying to be fair. We're both privileged. My husband's a nurse. Her husband has a good job. So we don't need to rely on our income solely. So if we have a bad month and we have to take a hit, we just take the hit um, to build the company. And so I think we're, we're in a really good place right now with all of our structures. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you, you talked about, and it's okay, it always does that. Uh, so y'all talked about, uh, like, fairness, right? And uh, paying everybody and stuff. So how do y'all view fairness, I guess, in this kind of environment? I think as the boss and as as the leaders of this company that's kind of how i view it i want to know i sit down with all the girls the girls on the wall um (laughs) and i ask them their goals like long term where do you want to be how can we help support and for a lot of them this is either a stepping zone or a side gig so i think fairness is just going in with set expectations and clear communication Mm -hmm. I think that's the number one thing, especially on the the management side. So, so for most of y'all employees, are they like full time? No. Or it, so it's we're just we're full time. We're yeah, we're we're salaried. We're so salaried. We're all time. All time. Twenty four seven. We're all time. And then um, the girls, they are ten ninety nine. Ten ninety nine. And um, we ask them kind of how many accounts I mean, can you take like they on? Charge more than ten ninety nine. But it, I, I, I love the idea of like um, one of our girls. She had finals. She said, "I'm like just need to pause for a month." Okay, yeah. just the flexibility and the communication. We have moms. We have. Real estate agents. Um, real estate agents. Um, one's husband is in the hospital right now. So just flexibility and being a good boss is very important to us. Yeah. And I think when we're trying to figure out what's fair to pay them, referencing what you said, we literally went back to what I was saying. We looked at, okay, what's the average that somebody makes for this? And we try to set it up for them where you can actually make more the better you develop. Because if once you, you know, are used to – Doing a graphic and it becomes more natural, easier for you. Um, also, um, if you're doing, you know, something that you've done before, you'll get it done much quicker than a brand new task. We so don't we try to pay by the hour. No, we, we no. pay by the task. So that okay. way, if you get your task done sooner, there you go. Yeah. It's it, the same amount of money whether it took you five minutes or 15. It doesn't I matter to us. We just I don't care what time of day, when, where. You could be in Europe, Hawaii, uh, your bathtub, like <laughs> – <laughs> don't really care. Yeah. Don't care. So I think I think that's how we keep it fair is we make it super flexible and we tell them up front. Like if you're looking for a full time, like this is gonna feed your kids, that's not our that's not our company. That's yeah. not us. Yeah. Um so I'm I'm trying to think. Y'all y'all covered everything, so mm-hmm. oh. so uh <laughs> so uh I guess what what do y'all want the company to be in the future? Mm-hmm. Mm. You can go first, Savannah. Do you want to unveil what our next, hopefully, big step is? Okay, I Ooh, I think we're on the same page. This is good yeah. for podcast. Okay, me. okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, okay. We hope to break into the Dallas market in Very the near soon. future. Do you want to expand on that? Very soon. <laughs> Very soon. Um, and also, Y'all picked up the Dallas Cowboys. Ooh. Oh man! <laughs> my husband, my dad would like that. Like shout out Cowboys if you need shout somebody. Out. We got you. <laughs> I bet you we could beat your pro- current price. <laughs> we bend over backwards. I bet Savannah will it. do the DCC dance. I got you. <laughs> she will to to the Thunder song. <laughs> yeah, I got it. she will. <laughs> if that's what it takes, I got it. So Dallas is on the horizon, and just in general, coming up on the two year mark, I'm really proud of the. Uh, relationships we've built with clients, like the clients we've had for year plus now. 
and just continuing on that trajectory and helping more local businesses because that's where our heart is. We just, oh, I love East Texas. I could talk about it all day. The brick streets, the pine trees, I love it and I love the people and yeah, yeah, ideally locally, we would love to pick up more clients. Like we don't ever, I don't, we're not in a, in a capacity where I think we would ever be able to say we can't, we can't take you on. It's kind of the beauty of our business model too. Mm-hmm. Because there's always going to be somebody who could use a side hustle in this economy and there's always going to be a business who could use the support so other people know about them. So we're never going to have to put a pause on people. So our scaling, we have a system in place to scale healthily. So that's not a problem. So our small dream is just, I would like to take on at least three more clients before the end of the year, <laughs> personally. Yeah. And then big, big scaling. We're not wait, too far away is Dallas. So wait, I would like a coffee shop. I'm going to put that out into the... Uh, oh, like you want a coffee shop client? Yes, I would love a coffee shop want client. For a long time. I can make such cute reels for you. Got you coffee shop. I will you are. personally buy a coffee there once a week for probably more <laughs> than once a week. Interviewing the owner of uh, Neighbors in Jacksonville. Ooh. So I'll, I'll try to hook y'all up. With them. That'd be... Hey, we have a referral. You we do, do that, have you a get, referral you get a fee. Kickback. And if you get us on a big package, you get a monthly kickback. So Okay, well, I'll, I'll really try to... <laughs> there you hey, go. Hey, as your interview... Like, you really want to go with their million dollar option. <laughs> as you're... It's not even that. It's not even close to that. As you're interviewing people, keep that in mind. Isaac, it could be your new side hustle. Kickbacks from Cryer and Co. <laughs> Everybody wins. Well, if y'all need a freelancer, you know. I know, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, th- let's say I- I'm coming to y'all, right? Mm-hmm. What What's the process? Like, what, what steps do we go through? Coffee. Co- we we love to we love to meet you in person and sit down and talk about your goals. Go from there. I'm never going to recommend somebody post three times a day. I'm never going to recommend something they don't need. That is not our style. I will straight up tell you they are they are upcharging you or they are um, not allocating your – oh, that's another thing. We don't do ads. Hot take. We believe if you're paying us for organic social media marketing, we get the results naturally. And – we do. Our analytics back it up. Yeah, we that don't That sounded so ask. like, but. <laughs> it's the truth. Well, and just my own opinion. I think people are like tired of being It's oversaturated now, to. 100%. It's oversaturated. Yeah. It's not authentic. This is what I explain. If you're at Walmart and you're looking for ketchup, right? Just because the, the top advertisement is a paid sponsored ad, all that tells me is you had enough money to be on top. That does not tell me your product is good. Yeah. We believe the same thing for about businesses. But you get a video that has, you know, 10,000 views because people love the people. That speaks something about the – not because it was paid for. That is a very hot take because any any marketing agency or any media company, you know, they, they sell ads and we really push for sitting down and making a plan. So going back to what you said, we sit down, we make a plan with you and then we schedule a day to come out and film. So we will be on site, we'll film, we'll do drone if that's included, photography, uh, short form video, long form video, whatever. Mm-hmm. We will edit it and um, going back to our sit down, we will have sent you a content calendar with captions, everything pre-approved. Um, then we'll film. And then we'll edit it. We'll send it to you for approval. Communication style is something we really value and like to figure out because every client's different. So some clients want to see everything. Like everything, which is, is totally fine. That's their brand. We love to work with them. Mm-hmm. Some clients are like, Just do it. I don't have I don't time, have time to this. even Just do it. like... I trust you. I trust you is the biggest compliment in marketing. Like, oh, take my heart now. (laughs) Um, But yeah, that's kind of the process. Um, We do everything white glove. So it is. You just have to say yes. Yes, I like this. You just have to, you just have to say yes to Cryer and Co. Media and you can be as hands on as you want or you can be as hands off as you want. And then we will meet back at the end of the month with a 60-page analytic report, and we will talk about what worked, what didn't work, and we'll go from there. Yeah. So, like, uh, I'm trying to think how to word this. So, 
Uh, I'm, I'm guessing since y- y'all kind of probably have like a set style, right? Like we definitely do have a style. So, I- so will y'all take on? Like a company that has a completely different style to oh, what yeah. you're used to. So, so we have no niche. We are mm-hmm. across the board. When I say set style, we have people that see our graphics before we even announce we got a new client. They'll text us, say, "Do you have this account? Like, I, it's your style." Which is weird because every client has a different vibe. Every client is different. They do. But there are certain things that are that will be crier, right? So a logo will be in a circle. Something will have a texture. Something will – there's just – There are little giveaways. There are just certain yeah. things that we do, but we do match. Like we don't go in and dictate the vibe for the client. We recommend the content for what's trending, what's going to get them 100%. the views. And then if they already have a set style, we match their energy – we just elevate their personality. Their marketing. So uh, Champion Fence is a client, and I'll just say they're the gold star when it comes to just letting the personality shine through. When we first sat down with them, they said, okay, all business. Like, I see what you do with some other people. Like, <laughs> we don't want to be crazy. We don't want TikTok. Now they're on TikTok. They're sending me video ideas. I've been with them almost a year now. Um, but th- that is all – that is their – authenticity coming mm-hmm. off and that's what people love that's what gets them numbers so i'd say there definitely are like crier styles but we soak in who they are as people and we yeah. run so with do you it think it's just like your ability because y'all are smaller y'all can have sort of that fun with it oh i think we would all we're gonna always do that we have to yeah. do that that's way. what we, makes us stand we think out that that's what's gonna stop social media people to look at your post that's what i in the in the nicest way, and I and I've said this too. One of our clients is Yosemite Roofing, and Josiah Roseberry knows that we feel this way with love. There's 123 roofing companies. Why Yosemite? Right? Mm. You don't just need pictures of your roofs. We need to know the people behind the roof because if I can love you as a person or trust you as a person, you're the person I want to work with when I'm ready for a roof. Let's call the guy with the goat. Let's call him. He had yeah. that funny video where they were dancing by the road. Let's call him. He's great. That's what we try to bring. So I think we will always have that personal. In fact, every new account stays with Katie or I for the mm-hmm. first at least three months before we ever turn it over to anybody because we want to make sure that client's vibe is set in, the communication style is set, and that they're comfortable and that we are 100% on the same page before we move forward. So we yeah. make it personal. So we will always have that goal. And in expansion, we're developing future long-term employees that will do the exact same that will thing, do the exact same thing no matter where we are so you're thinking okay there's just two of you so three months for everything so that's kind of our long-term goal as well because long-term katie and savannah can't do everything but i never want to lose that personal touch because i never want to sell ads i never want to sell ads so to get those numbers organically, you have to do the personal touch. You, mm-hmm. you we have enjoy to. it too, though. We oh my gosh, it's so much we fun. We love the clients. Yeah. We love meeting them. No like, two days the same. We like Good bringing them night. out of their comfort zone. I threw pies last week in somebody's face. Yeah, somebody's goat lives in my backyard. Yeah, you've had a goat <laughs> in the back of your <laughs> van. We've done uh, French fried taste tests. Uh, Good night. What else? We had a penguin suit. I mean, it's, a penguin suit. It's been a lot, Katie. We're different. <laughs> we're different. I always tell people she's the creative and we're I'm the crazy. Built, y'all, we're built different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which is true. We are completely different people, but in this business, we agree on what we want to bring to social media. So I think that also makes us – I was thinking no, about I that. No, I mean just as a business, we're different. Yeah, we are. But <laughs> Yeah, we are. But I was thinking about that. We are totally opposites oh as my gosh. people. Yeah. But we agree on that hard line for the mm-hmm. company, and I think that's what makes us strong. So, so what makes y'all completely different as people? Oh, gosh. I So we are actually in Leadership Tyler. Yes. Do you know what Leadership Tyler is? It's no. a very prestigious – I didn't either. It's okay. It's a very <laughs> – she, the socialite, introduced <laughs> me to it. The socialite. It's been around for 38 years. Like, we're class 38, but it's a very, very well-known, prestigious 
it's like school. I mean, it's the best way. It's a class. It's a program, a nine month program commitment to teach you about your city, how you could be better in your city. And part of what you do is they make you do personality ass- assessments, a disc assessment, <laughs> and it tells you where you land and how you lead. And, and Katie and I literal, <laughs> literal opposites on the circle. And then we had where she would say, would you rather this or would you rather this? I mean, easy things. <laughs> we were never <laughs> together. Like we met up no. for cake. And when we did, I was like, I don't know. I'm thinking pie. Like I wasn't no. even second guessing the cake. I, I realized very quickly I need to surround myself with people that are smarter than me to succeed. I think that is, I think as a leader, that is a strength of mine. Yes. I realize I can't do everything. So surround myself with people that are better than me. And there's no shame in that. So we're opposites. Like she's 10 o'clock. Hey, you want to get ice cream? I'm 10 o'clock. I'm in bed. Like, yeah. We're not. We're not yeah. doing that. Uh, I'm, uh, do you want to go out to dinner? Like I'll text you 20 minutes before. And she's like, has her uh, whole week weeks. planned. I mean, like, yes. to do something. Just different personality wise and then back to our cores in business as soon as I found those strengths of Savannah's I was like you are so much more than just like an assistant helper like I need you to structure this for me like the sky's the limit if we can put our brains together and wow well I'm trying to think I think I've ran out of good questions (laughs) so here's the part where I'll turn it over to y'all is there anything I want to cover before we end? Is like, uh, anything important to y'all's company, who y'all are, that y'all want to talk about, and we'll go from there. I think we touched on. I mean, I would just say that most we're kind of heartbroken right now. Every small business we keep seeing that's getting <gasps> shut. It's kind of breaking our heart. So yeah, L- Lola's was crazy. Oh, I know Lola's L- like, L- like Lola's like made me fall on I her chair. I was there last week. Like washing windows, but like <laughs> Aww, there's like yeah. no sign that anything's a, a mess. Yeah. I know it yeah. was it was heartbreaking for me, and I don't really know. And I don't know the back end of it. I just know I've never had anything bad at Lola's. The people are always great. The food is fantastic. The local talent was always wonderful. So that was heartbreaking. But we keep seeing them. Just this business shutting down. This business shutting down. So we it's, just it's hard right now. We want to be I mean, there to it, help it's people. It's been like five in the last month it's, that I've seen. It's sad. Shutdown. It's heartbreaking. And what we do is help small businesses. And like I do um, business consulting. So in addition to social, like like she said, and more. Like it's turned into so much more. So I'll go sit down with the business and I will give you a free consult on hey, what could what could we be doing here? Not just in social media. Like what can you do as a business? What other return can you make with what you're already doing? Um, so that's something we offer to businesses um we just we do a lot more and we just want all small businesses to know that we are truly here to help them yeah Mm -hmm. please reach out if you're if you've ever thought about social media like don't wait until it's too late word of mouth is amazing i i love word of mouth and it goes so far but digital is the future it's modern marketing and we'd love just to sit down and talk to you about it, even if we can coach you kind of through some stuff. Yeah, our consults are free. We didn't say that earlier. We don't charge to sit down with the business. Even yeah. if they never use us, even if they take an hour and a half of our time, like we truly, and if we can, we sat down with somebody the other day, she wound up not even emailing back, but she was she was like, I just don't know how to do this piece. I was like, hang on, I'll do it for you. And in five minutes, I had a huge piece of something she needed that she'd been struggling with for months. I emailed it to her and she's like, what's the fee? I'm like, no, just here if this is what you needed to be more successful there you go so so you did spur something yeah uh, so uh because you've talked about it a couple times about like not wanting to do ads uh but you know social media is our uh as as we were talking about earlier dystopian future <laughs> um, so what what do you what where do you see the future going with that and like how do you plan to adapt Katie question oh gosh i don't i don't think i'll ever be prepared it's changing weekly right mm-hmm. i just saw an instagram update and that's something that we have to stay on top of Every day, every week. So I don't know if I can predict that. I just know from being in the TV and radio industry that it is the future. You know, people used to spend a lot of money um, on TV ads and now it's being switched to streaming services. I tell people, you know, magazines, you can spend $500 and you get a list. You know, it's going to 1,300 people. 
but what happens to those magazines now? They're going in the trash. So if, and that's just the evolution of, I don't know how old is Facebook, but. I think 2000. Eight, it's not really nine. that old. Yeah, I mean, it's think, it's to not. Think about how, yeah. To think about how long um, magazines and TV was the source of advertising, I think the digital marketing, social media specifically realm is just only going to continue, which is great for promoting your business, but I'm the first to admit social media, especially with young kids, is terrifying. Mm-hmm. So I also do... Um, I guess it's internet safety, internet safety PSAs with Neptune navigate and they run that out to schools. So I'm not blind to that fact, but it is the future. Yeah. Just cause I do this. I, I will tell clients that I don't like social media and they're like, and I'm like, I know know, ironic. Right. But I like what social media can do for your business, but I also don't like what it's done for family. So like my kids, six of them, no screen, they don't have screens. And I try to limit my job and if I'm on my phone I'll say hey I'm doing something for work and then I'm getting off so that it can be it's like anything it can be used as a very successful tool but it could be very it could be a two-edged sword so we try to make sure that there is balance and we try to keep that balance in our lives yeah I think that is an honest conversation too like our screen time is not normal but it is for work yeah yeah Truly. that's like uh, something reset on my phone and so I wasn't like logged into any social media for like a couple of days, and it felt good. Yeah. It did feel and, good. And then I, I logged back so in. You do have like, to have a cleanse day. This? So people ask yeah. us all the time. We oh, we post on our page last because we have so much mm-hmm. client content that goes out every single day. That's true. And my personal Instagram has not seen a new picture in a minute. My off off marketing <laughs> is zilch, and it's because. When we do it day in, day out, yeah, you do need a refresh. And yeah. screen time, internet safety, that's something I'm very passionate about too. And I'm, yeah, it's it's amazing for businesses to get it out there. But for kids, it's a whole different ball game. A rabbit hole. Well, it, it is like, and I know I don't have kids, right? But like, when, when you see like a four-year-old and, and, and they're just like in the basket looking at a phone and, and i'm like it or like i've seen younger i've seen like infants and they've got like the yeah. phone mounted above them i'm like for one like their eyes aren't even developed yet yeah. <laughs> like it's what, crazy what's it gotta be I, I don't know well and there are case studies where you know they're saying the dangers of social media so like we're not ignorant we know that there's a place for it and a mm. time for it and a healthiness to it and so we'd make sure we we used, we advocate. For I, I that. mean that is that is the end. It's like this fantastic tool, right? Cause, right. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, pretty much beyond. Uh, uh, what's the printing press? Uh, what's the inventor's name? Gutenberg. I Guten, yeah, it's like oh, beyond the Gutenberg go. revolution. <laughs> yeah. Right. It is a revolution. What, what we can get. Yeah. But, but it's also become this thing where. Like, doom scrolling is 100% real. Yeah. Because we're just so wired towards negative yeah. negativity Yeah, that it's it's addictive. Um, I mean, like, I, I talked about on a podcast I did uh, outside of this, but, like, I, I mean, like, news. Mm. What, what that's done to, like, the o- older community, like the elders. Yeah. Like, like it's actually terrifying. So and, I, and, I don't watch the news because when you're a dispatcher – all the news stations are up 24 Mm seven. So you're current. So you know what's going on. And it was just so try working in a news station. (laughs) Yeah, that's right. It was so (laughs) negative and so like traumatizing. Like I literally got out of there and was like, yeah, I'm not gonna watch. And I have not watched the news in 15 years. (laughs) Well, yeah. Yeah. And, and and, I mean, the thing is like, cause a a lot of my clients are older, right? Yeah. And and, like, I've actually, especially over pandemic times. Yeah. Like interactions I've had with older people has changed, and it's like I, I I'm not sure, but I'm sure they think I'm like some radical far left or far right person who's gonna attack them or something. It, it's yeah. it's strange because like when I was a kid growing up, like 
I would just see like an old guy working in his shop. I'd be over there and I'd be like, hey, what you doing? And, you know, he'd tell me stories about, you know, working on the railroads or Love whatever. <laughs> Love it. And, and, and like now it's like there, there's this sense of... Uh, <sighs> You're digital. Disconnect. <laughs> Not, not even, di- but it, but it's it's a it's like a distrust of people, mm. and, and, and that's the thing is it's like if you if I sat down and watched any of the stations, we've got like this twenty four hour news cycle now, and, and you know a lot of these old people just leave it on twenty four yeah. seven, and and that's all you're seeing is the very worst, yeah, I know. of what happens in the world, yeah. and, and it skews like. The other day, I was like, you know, mad about something I saw online, right? And my brother's like, yeah, but that's like one person somewhere that no one would have known about, you know, 20 years ago. Yeah. And, and like now, like... It's blasted everywhere. Yeah, it, yeah. it's everywhere. And, and we're just tuning into it. I don't know how it changes, but yeah. <laughs> I'm not trying to say... <laughs> No, I'm yeah. not trying. I, I turned this into like a doom and gloom thing. No, no, we get <laughs> like, it. like no, what we y'all are it. doing is great. Like it honestly is because it's promoting, it's lifting up people, and I think the way y'all handle things is great. Like you said, the not advertising, the trying, to, you know, and and it's completely different from what I'm talking about. I yeah, no, and much. we're aware it's there. That we are aware there is a two head two headed coin to this social media business where we're completely aware yeah. of it. So yeah, if we didn't touch about kind of the reality the reality or the the underbelly of social media that wouldn't be authentic and we pride ourselves on being very authentic so yeah we just wanted to touch on that so just be authentic yeah 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 (laughs) be a human being yeah Yeah. (laughs) and it go outside like go outside outside. (laughs) so i will say um when the weather's nice in the springtime, we see lower numbers than in the winter, winter gloomy mm-hmm. months because people are outside. And we love that. And I love that. I love it when numbers are low because the weather is beautiful. Yeah. That yeah. makes me happy. People are out and about going to the Yeah, It's not on their phones. <laughs> yes. are, and I've explained this to clients too. And, you know, holidays are low too because people are with their families. Like, we love that. Mm-hmm. So, Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we can see. We can see when you're not on social and we love it. <laughs> <laughs> not all the time, but the specifically. Keep, keep the balance. Stay on social, but go outside. <laughs> so uh, if people want to reach out to you, what, what's the best way to do it? Yeah, so you can find us on Facebook and Instagram, Cryer and Co. Media. We just updated our website, cryerandcomedia.com. Send us a messenger. Send us a messenger. You can reach us out. Re- Ugh. Reach out. You can reach out to us on Facebook personally, Katie Cryer, Savannah Savvy Loy, Loy. Savvy, Savvy Loy. Savvy Loy. Uh, you know, Mel, Mel Carrier Pigeon, we, write us a letter. We, I know this, the, uh, the hutch on the roof. Yeah. Where they're flying in. Yeah, there you go. Um, <laughs> send us like, you know, what is it when the airplane goes in the sky? Sky ride us. <laughs> yeah. we, we, Ham radio. Every, <laughs> anyway, anyway. Something we've learned is everyone's communication style is different. Some people want to pick up the phone and talk. Some people want to text, email, but we love communication. However, come communicate with us. We don't us. care. Text us, email us, website us. We don't care. We're very nice. Just reach out to us. <laughs> well, thank y'all so much. I'm, I'm going to put a link to all y'all's different socials and contacts underneath the video. Perfect. Thank and, you. Uh, if you have a small business or, uh, uh, for any other reason you want to promote yourself, definitely come out. Check out Katie and uh, Savvy. I've been saying Savannah this whole time. No, it's here. Savannah. Okay. So because we have biological kids, we I'm, my name is not what it is on social media to make it harder to find us because oh, okay. our kids are adopted. So Gotcha. Yeah, no, it's fine though. All right. Well, thank you all very much. Uh, sorry if I doxed you. And uh, yeah, go, go check them out. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Oh, hi. You made it to the end. Congratulations on how many people do that. Um, while you're here, um, as well, like and subscribe and uh, check out our social media on uh, Instagram and Facebook under the uh, same name as down there. Thanks. <laughs>